Many thanks to Skillshare, the generous sponsors of this video. Hello and thanks for joining me for some landscape photography and today I've brought you along to one of my local beaches between the Anglesey villages of Aberfrau and Rosniger who are at a rocky outcrop on Porth Nobla. Now let me start by apologising that I haven't brought you out with me for any landscape photography for quite some time now. Unfortunately I've been tied up with business and family matters and when you add in a combination of poor conditions over the last month or so uh, and a plague of locusts otherwise known as tourists in the mountains uh, bringing bagfuls of rubbish to scatter about and then head off home it's been pretty grim and frankly I didn't think that there was anything that I could share with you that you'd really particularly want to watch that said I needed some fresh air I needed to do a little bit of photography just to blow the cobwebs away so a couple of hours on a beach close to home is the best I can manage at the moment now it's uh, slack water at low tide on a spring tide and what that does is it reveals quite a few interesting rock formations that I'd like to work with. Also I've got a flat blue sky so I don't hold out much hopes for sunset itself but that said we can always make use of the light in golden hour. Now, as I mentioned, the tide was at low water when I got here, but I've spent so long faffing about looking for this first shot that I'm now in very serious danger of getting cut off because I'm out on a rocky outcrop and behind me there's a deep gully that I'm going to have to cross and it's filling rapidly. But what I've been doing with this is using a long exposure and taking advantage of exactly what I was talking about earlier which is where you've got these lovely golden barnacles uh, in the uh, golden light as the sun is setting uh, and with a, a long exposure and a, a circular polarizer I can take advantage of all those lovely textures under the surface of the water uh, so I've managed to get my shutter speed out to about eight and a half nine seconds with a 10 stop filter on uh, and with the extra stop from the polarizer uh, shooting at 18 millimeters and what I really like about this particular composition is I've got an outcrop that's standing proud of the water and I've got these lovely wind lanes that are disappearing up to the horizon in a nice V shape so that's just kind of building the composition nicely but really the star of the show and what I was going for with this shot uh, are the lovely textures just under the water and that beautiful turquoise tint on it uh, counteracted by the golden barnacles uh, catching the sunlight. I think that's about it. I really need to get out of here fast because otherwise I'm going to be getting quite wet. Now I must be getting a bit rusty because I spent so long faffing around finding that first composition uh, and then almost getting stranded by the tide uh, I did get away without getting too wet. The problem is my 
alleged great local knowledge of tides has let me down rather badly because a spring tide, uh, when it comes in or out, moves much more quickly than a neap tide because it's going from low water to high water, which are much further apart, but in the same amount of time. So anyway, what all that has boiled down to is that the rocks that I wanted to work with are now completely underwater. Um, and I've spent so long faffing around, pretty much all I'm left with is the sunset to work with. I have got a composition which I'll show you in a moment, but there was just one thing I wanted to say. Since I've been away, uh, I've had quite a few messages from people uh, that fall distinctly into two camps. Uh, the first camp, for which I would like to say thank you very much indeed, I really appreciate it. Uh, people have written in saying, are you okay? Is everything all right? Because we haven't heard from you lately. And for that, I'm really appreciative. Uh, if you wrote in asking after me, thank you so much, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, I'll probably still be quite sporadic with the uh, video work, uh, but I will be keeping the channel going. Uh, the other camp of people that wrote in are people that have wrote in along the lines of, I've subscribed to your channel and you're not putting stuff out. What's going on? Well, my message to you folks is piss off. I do this for free and it takes an awful lot of work. And if you're upset that I haven't produced enough videos for you, you're tuned into entirely the wrong channel. Now, with that said, there's a sunset I need to sort out. Now when Skillshare got in touch and said, would I be interested in them sponsoring a video? I was really flattered because I've been a premium member of Skillshare for quite some time. It's great value for money and you get access to thousands of creative classes. Now a Skillshare membership means that you've got full access to everything they have to offer. All sorts of really interesting and creative skills. Of course, photography and video production. I'm currently taking a class by Thomas Frank in uh, media productivity. It's really interesting. Plus, you get to interact with other people taking the class and the tutor. But there are topics ranging from fine art and music to technical skills like web development and UX design. So there's bound to be something there that you'll find interesting. And the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial to Skillshare. Now I've got this image framed with these four ground rocks, which are actually looking quite nice because the tide is doing me a favour at this point as it comes in around them and separates them out into a relatively interesting foreground. And with the larger rocks off to my right hand side with the light bouncing off them, uh, they're framing the image quite nicely. Uh, I've got the sun just about uh, 15 minutes away from setting, but there is some colour coming in now and also just a little bit of high cloud sitting above it that I can make use of. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm focused very closely in. Uh, I'm going to exposure blend this and focus blend it. So I'm focused in on a foreground rock. And what I'm doing is just blanking out the sun so that with my foreground shot, I don't have any lens flare in it because the micro four thirds can cause problems uh, if I didn't block the sun out. Now, of course, that's got my hand sitting in the top half of the frame, but I'm only going to use the bottom third of this particular frame in my final composition. So I think that'll do it for my foreground. Let me just check the focus. Yeah, that looks okay. So what I'm now going to do is focus on some rocks that are just about uh, uh, 100, 150 metres uh, offshore, just away from my location here, which is a nice bit of solid mid-ground for my camera to focus on, because when you're shooting directly into the sun, even as the light drops quite rapidly, uh, your autofocus can struggle a little bit, and I could manually focus it, but it works okay if I got something with high contrast to lock onto. So now what I'm going to do is 
change that exposure right down and what this does is it gives me the uh, really nice reflection of the sun, the beautiful orange dappled light as it comes straight across the bay as the sun's going down over Hollyhead Mountain. So uh, this particular shot is going to be with the sun still uh, probably a degree or two above the horizon. Uh, I don't want it uh, completely down. What I'll probably do once I've got the exposures for this shot organized is that I'll uh, zoom right in and get the sun as it drops immediately behind the horizon. But uh, we'll just get this shot away. And that's nice and sharp. I'm liking that. So I've now got my foreground shot and my midground shot nicely sorted out. If I let the sun go down too far, what happens is the reflections, uh, the lovely orange light reflecting in that nice path across the water tends to dim down quite quickly and you lose its impact. So I'm going to use that as my middle ground shot and then I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to take my exposure down quite a lot further for the shot that I will use to blend the sun itself and the sky uh, into the image. Don't need to refocus because at f5.6 having focused uh, in that mid-ground area I know that the mountain profile in the background will be as sharp as I need it to be. And we've got another shot in the bag that's that's looking quite good. Now what I've noticed uh, and quite apart from the fact that I've noticed that I'm standing in now standing in water and it's coming in really fast. So I'm just going to rescue my bag. Okay, well, <laughs> rescued that just in time. Uh, and I think I've got everything I need in terms of exposures for this composition. So once again, time to head back up to higher ground. Well, that was fun. You see that stretch of water there? I just waded through it up to about here. Um, yeah, it comes in really fast. I've never actually managed to get myself completely cut off like that before. I was very concerned about my kit. It was touch and go as to whether I did what Jason did a couple of months ago when he got stranded on Llanthwyn Island and wait for rescue or spend the night. Uh, but uh, luckily, uh, I managed to come through with my gear safe. So um, let's press on because I think there's another image to be had. Uh, the sun is now in some really nice low cloud. It's coloured up beautifully and I'm going to zoom in really tight on it just as it hits the horizon. Well, now with the sun almost down and really not much going on in the sky, I think I'm pretty much all done for tonight. Uh, probably only three images to share with you at the end. But despite that, my troubles with the tide, my impromptu paddling session, I've really enjoyed myself. It's really blown the cobwebs away. So it just remains for me to say thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now? Join me next time. Cheers.